Disclaimer. This video is a historical documentary created for educational purposes. All scenes are artistic reenactments based on documented events. No real violence is shown or promoted. On a cold May morning in 1794, the crowds of Paris gathered to watch the unthinkable. The father of modern chemistry, Antoine Lavoisier, kneeling beneath the guillotine's gleaming blade. As the drum roll thundered through the square, one of history's greatest minds faced a machine built to erase him in a single, merciless stroke. Moments later, the blade fell, and France had executed its greatest scientist. But how did the man who discovered oxygen, the genius who revealed the hidden laws of nature, end up condemned by the very revolution that claimed to worship reason? This is the story of how France killed its brightest light. And this is the French Revolution, the very movement that, in the name of progress, sent its greatest scientific mind to the guillotine. So, how did the man who unlocked the secrets of the natural world find himself condemned by a revolution supposedly founded on reason? This is the story of how France executed its greatest scientist. In the mid-18th century, chemistry was a messy and mysterious business, closer to alchemy than an actual science. It was dominated by a strange idea called the phlogiston theory. The theory went like this. Anything that can burn contains a fire-like element called phlogiston, and the act of burning releases it. It was a neat explanation that seemed to make sense, but it had one massive problem. When you burned certain materials, like metals, they actually got heavier, not lighter. This was a paradox that stumped even the sharpest minds of the day. Enter Antoine Laurent Lavoisier. Born in 1743 to a wealthy Parisian family, Lavoisier was a true product of the Enlightenment, a man who believed in order, precision, and above all, measurement. While others were content with simple observation, Lavoisier brought a secret weapon into the lab, an extremely precise set of scales. He weighed everything, the reactants before an experiment and the products after. It sounds simple, but this one act would change science forever. Through a series of painstaking experiments, Lavoisier proved that burning wasn't about releasing some mystical substance. It was about a chemical reaction with a specific part of the air. He took a gas recently isolated by Joseph Priestley, and using his quantitative method, showed it was a unique element. Lavoisier named it oxygen, from the Greek words for acid former. With that, the phlogiston theory was demolished. But Lavoisier was just getting started. By meticulously tracking the weights in his sealed flasks, he helped establish one of the most fundamental laws of nature, the law of conservation of mass. It states that matter is never created or destroyed in a chemical reaction. It only changes form. He proved that water wasn't an element, but a compound of oxygen and another gas he named hydrogen. In 1789, the same year the revolution began, he published his Elementary Treatise on Chemistry, a book that created a new, logical system for chemistry and laid the groundwork for the modern science. He had turned a mystical art into a quantitative science. But just as Lavoisier was unlocking the secrets of the universe, the world around him was spiraling into chaos and his brilliant work in the lab was funded by a source of power that would ultimately seal his fate. To fund his expensive research, Lavoisier needed a lot of money. He found it in one of the most hated institutions in all of pre-revolutionary France, the Ferme Générale, or the General Farm. The General Farm was a private company of financiers who paid the king a huge fee for the right to collect taxes. In exchange, they got to keep any surplus they collected. The system was notoriously corrupt, and the tax farmers, known as the fermiers généraux, became symbols of the monarchy's greed. To the common people, they were parasites, profiting from their misery. In 1768, at just 26 years old, 
Lavoisier bought a share in the company. This role made him incredibly wealthy, but it also branded him as a figure of the wildly unpopular old regime. It was Lavoisier in his role as a tax farmer who proposed building a wall around Paris to crack down on smuggling and enforce customs duties, a move that made him a well-known and disliked figure in the city. For years, Lavoisier lived a double life. By day, he was a groundbreaking scientist, pushing the boundaries of knowledge and working with international figures like Benjamin Franklin. By night, he was a powerful financier, an aristocrat deeply entangled in the very system the French Revolution was determined to tear down. When the Bastille fell in 1789, Lavoisier was initially on board with the revolution's goals. As a man of the Enlightenment, he believed in reason and reform. He even lent his scientific expertise to the new government, helping develop the metric system as a new, rational standard for all citizens. He hoped science could help build a better France. But as the revolution became more and more radical, it grew hungry for scapegoats. And who made a better target than the rich tax farmers of the old regime? By 1793, the revolution had descended into its most brutal phase, the reign of terror. Power was consolidated in the hands of the Committee of Public Safety, led by radicals like Maximilien Robespierre. The ideals of liberty and reason were washed away in a tide of paranoia, suspicion, and the relentless fall of the guillotine's blade. The revolution turned on its own. Intellectuals and anyone tied to the old monarchy were branded enemies of the people. Scientific bodies like the French Academy of Sciences were shut down, condemned as elitist institutions. The climate of reason that Lavoisier had thrived in was gone, replaced by a climate of terror. In November 1793, a warrant was issued for the arrest of all former tax farmers. They were accused of defrauding the state, with one of the most inflammatory charges being that they had adulterated tobacco with water to increase its weight and their profits. Lavoisier was arrested with his father-in-law and 26 other tax farmers. From prison, he wrote a detailed defense, arguing they had operated legally under the old government and managed the king's funds as required. His friends and fellow scientists pleaded for his release, pointing to his enormous contributions to France and to science. It was no use. The Revolutionary Tribunal wasn't interested in nuance or scientific genius. It wanted blood. A popular, though likely apocryphal story, claims that when Lavoisier's scientific importance was raised, the judge, Jean-Baptiste Coffinol, shot back. The Republic has no need of scientists. Whether the words were spoken or not, they perfectly captured the mood of the moment. In its fanatical purge, the revolution had no time for genius. The story of how a revolution founded on the ideal of reason could devour one of its most brilliant minds is a powerful reminder of how quickly ideals can curdle into extremism. History is full of these tragic ironies. If you appreciate these kinds of deep dives, please take a moment to subscribe and hit the like button. It helps us continue to bring these important stories to light. On May 8, 1794, Antoine Lavoisier and the 27 other tax farmers were brought before the Revolutionary Tribunal. The trial was a sham. The verdict was decided before it even began. All were found guilty. The sentence was death by guillotine, to be carried out that same day. At 50 years old, Lavoisier was at the peak of his intellectual powers and had been studying the mechanics of respiration right up to his arrest. A persistent legend says that as he was led to the scaffold, he arranged one final experiment. He supposedly told his assistant he would try to blink for as long as he could after being beheaded to test whether consciousness lingered. Some versions of the story even claim he blinked for 15 or 20 seconds, though this is almost certainly a dramatic embellishment. Lavoisier was executed on the Place de la Révolution. 
His body was thrown into an unmarked common grave, a great mind discarded by the nation he tried to serve. News of his death sent shockwaves through the scientific world. His friend and fellow mathematician, Joseph Louis Lagrange, was devastated. On hearing the news, he uttered the most famous eulogy for the fallen scientist. It took them only an instant to cut off that head, he said, and a hundred years may not produce another like it. Lavoisier wasn't executed for his science. He was killed for his financial ties to a world the revolution sought to erase. His death stands as a chilling reminder of how quickly political fanaticism can consume intellectual treasures. The same revolution that began with Enlightenment principles devolved into a bloodbath that consumed even its most brilliant minds. But while the man was killed, his work laid the permanent foundation for modern chemistry. The principles he discovered, from the law of conservation of mass to the role of oxygen in our world, are taught in every science class today. In a tragic twist of fate, the movement that championed reason chose to silence one of its most profound voices, but it couldn't silence his ideas.